Welcome to our quick presentation of the Compact City as it is in this version for installation in a small vehicle or for example on the back of a four-wheel drive pickup truck. It is also available as the Searchflex 40. Um, then it would have its own big wheels to roll around as an individual unit. The high voltage unit consists of a 40 kV DC tester and different search ranges starting with the lowest range 2 kV which is nice for um, low voltage cable fault locating, street lighting and it goes up to 32 kV which is then for medium voltage cables, maybe even high voltage cables um, and in between you have different ranges like um, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 kV. That's the high voltage unit. Here we have some extra energy, extra surge ranges, that's why we have the extra box attached. But the controls are all done by the um, TDR, the Time Domain Reflectometer. And this will control all functions of the main unit. So you could store the main unit in the back of a vehicle and have the controls from somewhere else separate. The whole fault locating system is controlled over this one button and this is our main control panel. Here we see the most important information. We see which phase we're connected to, if we apply voltage or not. Right now we are grounded. We see our measurement window with an overview over the whole cable and we see which method we're using. All is controlled with this single button and we have four ways of clicking up, down, left or right which gives us the quick access menus. The most important one, clicking to the left, is our menu for the modes. We have a protocol feature, insulation test, DC test, breakdown detection which is practically the same as the DC test but here it will save for us the value of the breakdown and the voltage will not after the breakdown go down and, and continue and this way we can easily read what was the breakdown voltage which later we can use for the fault pinpointing. Then for pre-location we have the normal reflectometer mode, the Teleflex and a nice variation with the intermittent fault locating mode which will also save traces for us on the screen as we work with it. This is all not applying high voltage. And here we come to the high voltage methods, arc reflection method, the most commonly used one. Some people are only using this method. It's the easiest one, the fastest, the clearest. If you run into problems with that, you still have the option of the impulse current equipment method, which is a bit more powerful or the voltage decay method, which allows you to go up to 40 kV because it's using the DC test setup of the instrument. And for pinpointing, you have the normal acoustic method with a surge generator. You have sheath fault location or any kind of ground fault. And you have a very nice and powerful burning feature with 700 milliamps, which is really a lot for a small unit like this. I will go into the breakdown detection mode to find out what is my breakdown voltage. It automatically jumps in the phase selection. I accept that, close that window. I give it a bit voltage, the maximum voltage that I dare to apply. Start. And here you hear the automatic switching inside the unit. And now I have to confirm by pressing the green HV on button. This is to consciously confirm that I do apply high voltage now. It has to be a separate hardware button so you cannot interfere with any software there. I can now fine adjust my voltage within a range. I see my voltage building up and I got a flash over at 4.8 kV. After confirming this message, I can now switch into the next mode, that would be arc reflection mode, finding the fault. 
selecting the phase, yes, phase one. I go into the 16 kV range because I do need more than 4 kV. I've just seen that. Confirm. You hear the switching of the instrument again. Press the high voltage. That's always the same procedure in any mode. Automatically, it is finding the cable end here as an upward reflection and setting the range and the gain. I switch over to fault trace. Now I give it a certain voltage that I need, a bit higher than my breakdown. I see here my range is 16 kV. I have set it to 6 kV. Start, my voltage is now applied. Flashing over, and now I got, I see trace one out of 15. I can select the nicest one and confirm. And my cursor jumps right to the fault position at 58.8 meters. This was arc reflection method. And the moment I leave this mode and go somewhere else, Automatically the high voltage is switched off and I would find my measurement in the history. And I will see my measurement from just a moment ago. In the 16 kV range I was using 6 kV in the measuring range of 200 meters. If that is not enough information for me I can simply edit a comment and say good one. Okay. And here is my comment. So if along my fault locating I want to go back to a measurement that I did an hour or two hours ago for comparison, I can do that. And if I have many measurements, I can even distinguish them by the settings or by a comment that I enter. And here is my measurement from a moment ago. I see now from the barrel symbol that it comes out of memory. I could superimpose a new measurement for comparison on my screen. I see the most important data from my um, measurement out of history. It was um, taken with a 50 volt pulse of the TDR of 50 nanoseconds. A narrow pulse will give you more details. I was in the 200 meter range. I see my measurement up on the top window. I see my zero start point. The rest is inside the van, so I don't need to see that. That's why on the big picture it's um, out of the uh, image. And here I see my big measurement and I see it up here. If I click into the zoom, it will automatically zoom around my end cursor. And on the top window, I see where on my whole cable length am I, so I don't get lost. The function buttons are always at the same position. So my cursor is always at the two o'clock position. My range, X range, is always at the one o'clock position. Gain is always at 12 o'clock. Return always at nine o'clock. Um, propagation velocity always at eight o'clock. So if I look for a certain function, I know where to look for it. If I go to the cursor, I can change my cursor manually. Here I have my original one because it's out of memory. And I can continue measuring, for example, for my cable end. So I can do that very precisely. Or if I turn fast, I do quick movements with a cursor. So I can very easily, quickly get to the point of interest. And if I 
hold it pressed, I set a reference cursor and I can measure from one to another point. Very simple, very convenient. Also very nice about this instrument is it's Linux operated so I can turn it off at any time I want and it won't 